Hello and uh, welcome to League of Brewers, Nelson, New Zealand. Um, we are here today to talk a little bit about Creek. Um, we finally managed to get our hands on some, on some Creek. So we've been doing a little bit of a, um, a side-by-side test that uh, Ed is going to talk us through. So Ed, um, what can you tell us about Creek yeast? Um, well, Creek, or Creek, being German, I always mix up V's and W's. Um, especially in Norwegian words, as a, um, as a Norwegian strain of yeast that recently made it into fame in the homebrewers community. And um, essentially, it used to be called a farmhouse strain, and probably it is because it's been discovered in Norwegian farmhouses. However, it doesn't give you the same fermentation profile as the wild yeast that you're probably used to. Um, it's supposed to be very clean. <laughs> and you can make any clean type of beer with it. Plus, it seems to be very tolerant of pitching rates and temperatures, which is uh, fascinating, and that's something we wanted to test in this uh, trial batch. Awesome, so what have we done um, with the side-by-side? -side? What, what's your, your comparison? So, me being German and finally having accepted uh, Kiwi Pilsen as a style and uh, having started to love them very much, um, I figured, why not try to make a Kvik Kiwi Pilsner and um, essentially what I've done is I've done a split batch, done the same word, everything, same hop additions, same dry hops um, and have used one vial of Kvik of which I've used about 20% that I've pitched into half of that word at about 32 degrees Celsius and the other 80% of that vial um, I've pitched into wort at 18 degrees, degrees Celsius. Um, the first batch I fermented at 32. I wanted to get it higher, but it's winter in New Zealand and uh, it's really hard to get up to 35 or 40 degrees, which supposedly is a possibility with Kvik. Um, so I got it to 32. Um, and the second one I fermented like a normal USO5 or any ale strain at 18 degrees with a temperature raise towards the end and let it finish off. Um, so that was basically, the only difference is every, all ingredients are the same, just the process about the fermentation is different. So batch one then what you've done is to take a, a very low pitch rate and yes. have a high fermentation temperature. Yeah. Um, so everything you might consider um, doing to stress a yeast. Yeah. Um, whereas batch two you've done more traditionally with a much higher pitching rate and yeah. a more standard fermentation temperature. That's right. So any other yeast strain that I'm aware of, if you pitch 20% of a vial into a 32 degree word, you will not want to drink that. Um, with Kvik, we will see. Awesome. And the particular strain of yeast that you've used? Um, so we got a shipment of uh, Yeast Bay, Sigmund Voss, Kvik, which seems to be the most available one. Um, Sigmund Voss strain is only one of the uh, Kvik yeasts. It again has supposed to be uh, very clean if you ferment it without too much stress like a traditional yeast and then people say if you stress it like crazy and I don't know if I reach the crazy level here um, it might throw some orangey um, esters which can be quite nice in a hoppy beer so that's what I've read and I don't know if it's true because I haven't tried it yet Awesome, okay and just uh, before we start uh, getting into tasting these um, just give us a quick summary of what the recipe was So the recipe is very very simple I didn't want to do any kind of malt distractions in here um, plus, I started playing around a little bit with uh, Gladfield Lager Light, which seems to be one of those malts that nobody uses, and I figured, why not? Um, so this recipe is uh, more than 45, I think 45% Lager Light, uh, about 40% Gladfield Pilsner, and um, maybe 10-15% of Gladfield Wheat and some acidulated malt to just bring the pH into the right target level. Awesome. And the hops you've used? Um, the hops I've used was something I found in my fridge. I had some uh, Taiheke that's been sitting in the fridge for a bit, but they still smell fine. I want to get rid of that. And I had some 4337, which is this new trial hop by uh, New Zealand Hops that everybody's raving about. So both of them make up the mix of the hop additions here. Um, fairly small dry hop addition, only about 50 grams for 20 liters, uh, but a fairly large uh, whirlpool addition on both of them. Awesome. Any bittering uh, addition? 
Uh, let me think, there might be a 10 gram bittering edition of a Noble Hop, maybe a Polish one that I still have in my fridge, but I don't think <laughs> it will play a, a major role in this beer. Awesome. Well, um, we'll definitely put a, a link to the, the full recipe in the video comments. Um, so let's get into it. So this one here, this is what we're calling batch one. Yes. And uh, at this moment I've got no idea which one is the stressed under pitch hot ferment and which one is the more standard. So let's get into it. So there's a lot of hot character in there and you planted that idea of orange in my brain as well. So it's almost a bit spicy. It is, isn't it? They're relatively, <coughs> relatively clean. Uh, very citrusy for me. Grapefruit, and I agree, I believe I can get some um, orangey bits that go beyond the usual grapefruit. It's almost like smelling orange juice at this point. <laughs> Interesting. Well, that's what you get with breakfast beer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is um, during shop hours on um, Saturday morning at League of Brewers. Um, so you might be able to hear some customers um, chatting away with Dan in the background. Uh, just as a side note, I forgot to mention, um, both of them finished at uh, 1.013, 10.13, um, and started at 10.48, I believe. So they're all, or oh, both of them are in the 4.2% range. So perfect beer for older people to not get a hangover the next day. You're talking about me there, aren't you? Well, who's got more gray hair? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's tasting like a good breakfast beer as well. Um, it is uh, not too heavy. Uh, it's got good carbonation, obviously. Um, well, I don't know how easy that is to see on camera, but it's got a reasonable amount of haze to it. Um, good level of bitterness, but a lot of this juicy sort of character. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, the haze is interesting. So this beer has been sitting in a fermenter a different time than the other beer. Maybe let's go through that because I might give things away. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I probably already have. <laughs> Right, let's go to beer number two. Well, I'm really hoping this is going to come out like a clean, crisp New Zealand Pilsner, and then I'll have an obvious answer as to which one has been stressed. What about this? But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not getting that big citrus hit on this one. Yeah, I agree. It's got a hoppy nose, just a totally different one. Less complex citrus, I'd say. Yep. Doesn't have that same spicy character. Much more traditional um, sort of beery pilsner aroma. Maybe a little bit of sulfur. <laughs> Maybe. I'm usually. Oh yeah, I think I'm getting it. No, you planted that seed in my head. There we go. My work is done. And yep, that's definitely tasting like a much cleaner, more traditional ferment style. Yeah. In terms of Kiwi Pilsner recipe, I think I almost went too far in trying to remove the malt. That's kind of my assessment of the beer at the moment. It's a, it's almost like a hop juice, um, but very crisp, I think. Mm. To me, this is more crisp than the juicy one, and that's an interesting Effect, I think. That was just amazing the difference in the two beers. I mean, obviously using the same yeast, handled under different um, uh, pitching and, and fermentation temperatures, and both of them good, pleasant drinking beers. Yeah, but very, very different. Yes. So, if you were going to do this again, Ed, oh, and, well, first confirm for me. <laughs> This is the stress sample. Yes. And that's the standard sample. Awesome. That's right. Um, so if you were going to um, do this again, um, or you're um, thinking about um, when and how to use the Sigmund Boss feed, what feedback would you be giving at this point? I think uh, it's a yeast that you can mistreat, like um, that dog you don't want anymore. You can uh, kick it and you can uh, forget about it, you can just do whatever the hell you want and it will make you a good beer. So it's a very 
forgiving yeast. It's unbelievable um, that you can make a beer with like pitching whatever you want at a very hot temperature and you just get a slightly more uh, citrusy, juicy variation of a beer or you just use it like a US05 or even a lager yeast and you get a, I mean Mike mentioned sulfur which is something you probably won't get much out of US05 so you can make a pseudo lager with it. Um, the other fact is that the under pitched yeast under stress was finished fermenting for me in four days and I've heard people who went high on temperature managed to ferment through in three days which is insanely quick so if you have some kind of party emergency on the weekend um, you just pitch it hot and make something citrusy juicy IPA like or even a, a I don't know if that style exists the juicy kiwi pilsner that's just wrong <laughs> Or if you uh, don't have temperature control, I think that's an awesome yeast to use. If it's uh, middle of summer, um, your shadiest room in the house is still in the mid 20s or so, you know, um, you just pitch and off you go. And the next thing is you never have to do a starter with that yeast because it performs perfectly fine. If it's older, it'll probably be a bit more stress fermenting uh, your beer and you get more beautiful juicy character and if it's a brand new vial that has maybe only a couple of weeks um, after production you'll get a perfectly clean beer both are very acceptable so it, it certainly seems if you want to get um, that sort of unique freak character into the beer then you have to stress these yes and considerably so um, from what I've read that's why I went with about 20% of the vial um, about a teaspoon of slurry and 20 liters of beer at 35 ish degrees is the way to go um, if you want to properly stress it and I believe you should be able to get even more of this orangey character out um, but if you just pitch the yeast as it is from a vial you'll probably just get a nice perfectly clean ferment awesome good stuff thanks a lot Ed thanks guys thanks guys don't forget you can subscribe to our channel or check out our other videos